time for our Nigerian market update and joining us live in studio in Johannesburg is David Alao, analyst at Stanbig IBTC Asset Management. Nice to have you in studio for a change. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the program. You are visiting Johannesburg. Off you were saying that you are looking for new products. Yeah. We know that there's been, there hasn't been enough participation when it comes to the Nigerian market. Uh, is, uh, is this what is required, that new products are brought to the fore to try and get investors to move away from the fixed income space and the treasury space back into the equity market? Um, what we're seeing is um, there is the demand for the fixed income market, but also there, there is also demand for the equity space. However, there is confidence lacking in that market. And we believe that um, by the regulators trying to instill confidence, trying to uh, increase the level of education, and also uh, introduction of new products, particularly you know, products suited to the retail market. A lot of the retail guys have been burned by individual stocks, you know, and the, a lot of them have vowed never to go back to the uh, mm -hmm. equities market. However, we believe that if you have um, a unitized scheme uh, or different uh, uh, product offerings that are unitized schemes, it will be uh, beneficial to uh, investors, mm -hmm. particularly retail investors, for them to um, you know, take advantage of. Uh, as opposed to buying individual equities. It's quite interesting because you're talking about the shift in sentiment and what really could change things is the banking sector because this is what actually resulted into the 60% plus drop yeah, uh, in the NSC yeah. in uh, 2008. Is there enough positivity that's coming through because we've had UBA and Access Bank coming out with a profit warning and of course releasing a bit of negative results but saying that things are going to look better going forward and then Union Bank results also relatively disappointing but that was a, a, res a rescued bank as well. Yeah. Um, well, FCMB and UVA did come out with profit warnings. Yeah. Um, but we have seen uh, positive results as well um, from some of the banks. For example, GTB came out with um, strong earnings growth. And access, uh, they, I think, as well. Yeah, and yeah. access as well. Uh, GTB had over 20% um, ROEs. Um, MPL was moderated. Um, and I think that they, they, they're, they're also forging into uh, the Francophone African countries. And I think that there's a lot of positive news from there. Zenith as well has done quite well. Um, they've got above 15% ROEs. Um, and they're also looking uh, to, to reduce their cost and, and better their performance going forward. I think what's, right, what's important to us is we're seeing increase in uh, credit to the private sector. You know, um, and I think that's above 13%. I think that that is positive, you know, going forward. Uh, going back to pre-2008 levels, you had private credit to the private sector above 50, above 60%. Mm -hmm. um, and then subsequently, you've seen a crowding out by the federal government, you know, issuing treasuries and credit to the private sector pretty much just dying. You know, um, but in recent times, we've seen increasing credit to the private sector. We believe that going forward, you know, you are going to see um, uh, better uh, earnings uh, results from the banks. With Union Bank, we're not particularly surprised, yeah. um, considering that most of the other banks would came out with their Q2 and Q3 results last year, uh, August, September, and, no and October, November. They're coming out with those results now you know, about six, seven months later than everybody else. You know, I think the market's sort of... So it's really of backward looking, it's yes, not it's really yes, very... Yes, yes, yes. And it also seems as though the, the uh, acquirers of the Union Bank, uh, that's ACA, um, pretty much have taken huge, uh, you know, the, the, the provisions, you know, on, on losses. They've actually, the provisions in Q3 were about 50-something billion, you know. Um, I think worrying for us, we, you know, um, uh, income was lower than, uh, than expenses, which, which is, you know, uh, it shows that you're not actually doing that much business. And then with the provisions as well, took the loss for the quarter, Q3, so about six, over 60 billion. I guess now. let's now let's now delve into another news story because Nigerian uh, exposure, Nigerian pension exposure to uh, equity markets has now been increased to half of the pension as opposed to a quarter of mm. the pensions. Um, uh, and also, what quite, was quite interesting to note that in 2010 we had uh, the overall pension industry sitting around 13 billion dollars. Uh, it's growing at around 30 percent per annum. Where's that money going, and do you think it's going to land up in the equity market now that the allocation has been increased? Have, have they even been using the quarter, the quarter? allocation allowance? No, they haven't been using the uh, full uh, allocation. Um, having a 25% allocation versus uh, some of the larger pension funds having probably about 18 to 20% of their 
of the um, AUM in equities. You know, for some of them, you know, they, they have less than 10% in equities. You know, so it really it's, uh, you have um, a situation whereby uh, the investors, you know, um, to me are at a detriment. Because if you have a pension, you know, it, it, it should be uh, long term. You know, and if you have a long-term outlook, then you should be in equity. If you see a 60% deterioration in your wealth in one year, and then last year we also saw the NEC dropping 16%, surely that makes a lot of people risk-averse. Yes, David. yes, you're right, in the last two years, or last three years. But if you consider that, you know, um, in the last 10 years, the equities market is actually positive. You know, if you consider that, you know, some years you've had the equities market doing 60% positive, 100% positive, you know, um, clearly, you know, yes, everybody's got their day in the sun, you know, yeah. but I think that, you know, the, 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 there is scope for um, uh, increased allocation to equities. But I think more importantly, what the uh, PENCOM is, uh, is looking to do is to have different uh, tiers of funds, you know, probably uh, funds looking at younger people and people then near to retirement and the like, so that you can have a larger allocation to equities for people with a longer investment horizon as opposed to uh, people nearing retirement. Very quickly, let's touch on Lafarge Wealth, Wapco, posting a 43% year-on-year growth in revenue. Can it continue this trend? Very quickly, please. Um, I think that Lafarge Wapco can actually continue. Um, uh, low uh, debt, uh, in fact, the refinance in uh, late 2011, um, the interest rate on the bond is about 11 percent i think that uh, cash flow is the critical factor here you know um, they've maintained their market share and i think also that with the um, tax benefits that they've earned uh, from the lakatabu plant um, i think with that as well they can actually um, sustain the growth it, the, the african story or the growth in infrastructure the growth in roads the growth in uh, real estate development brings or, or will keep uh, the demand for cement uh, constant at least for the next three to five years and we think it's positive for the company going forward. David, great to have you in studio, Fantastic. in person. Thank, Thank you. you so very much for joining us and I do hope we see you again in Johannesburg soon. Absolutely. I appreciate Cheers. your time. David Alau from Standberg IBTC.